Instead, we are going to focus on a volunteer driver program who would be able to pick up the trips that the other two vehicles are unable to do. I do, though, at the present time, and still having the third vehicle brought out until we are able to establish that volunteer driver program better. And they are doing just the excess runs, just runs that you know the other two absolutely cannot fit on, but we actually have already put into place and already scheduled. So our system manager has been kind of playing a dual role. He's been doing, working with the system, managing the system, but he's also been out driving some also. And so I, he's just come in, so I'd like to introduce him. Okay. Ted. Ted, why don't you pull out a chair? This is Ted Lavite. So it has been a bit stressful. Um, I am having some of the administration in my office try and be able to help Ted with some of the administrative duties that he has to be able to help out on that avenue until we get a better demand response system in place. And the other, I mean a better volunteer driver program in place, the other thing that we are looking at, and we met yesterday on this, is to come up with trips to be able to accommodate, and we're gearing it towards seniors, but we have an open door policy so anyone can ride. <coughs> but um, so that if we know there are shopping trips that need to be done, how can we plan those so we can better accommodate the individuals in areas that are close together? So if we have Ossipee and we have surrounding towns and there are seniors or people who need to go a further distance shopping, we like to fill that bus up and be able to put them on the bus and take them on a day of the week that is probably more suitable to, the, to them. One of the things that we noticed with our other services is the day after Social Security checks come out is huge. That is a day when we fill our buses with groups of seniors and we take them shopping. Um, so we want to focus on more of that. It would be much more cost effective for our system to be able to provide eight trips or I mean eight people or even 16 people in a bus to be able to take them to one distance other than providing one trip. The other reason we want to do this is we have medical as our priority. Medical is very important and we find that is our number one thing. So if we've got a person that calls and wants to go shopping but we have another one that really needs to get to the doctor's office for an appointment, our priority is going to be the doctor's office. And sometimes we have to ask people to reschedule We try not to do that, but it's kind of limited sometimes and we have no choice. Can I ask uh, a question? With regard to the gentleman who is holding up the work at this moment. What, what, how, what would you just say is the description of his job as opposed to what you do? His job would be overseeing the operation and maintenance of the system. Um, the fixed system. The fixed, fixed system. system. Just the fixed route system, yes. He would be in charge of the buses, running the buses, seeing that they were, you know, staff, overseeing the staff that's running the buses. Um, watching that they're on schedule, if there's any maintenance, maintenance that needs to be done, taking care of getting maintenance, taking care of. And how does that differ from Ted's job? Ted is actually overseeing all of the demand response system. He's overseeing the paperwork that needs to come in, the timesheets that need to come in, and he's sending that all, it all has to come up to our office, so he handles that. He does a lot of the marketing, he does a lot of the meetings to promote the service. He would still be doing the meetings to promote service, to educate people on how to use the service, and that would be for both services. That would be for the demand response as well as the um, public route system. Also, driver coordination. Mm -hmm. And is driver coordination going to continue, though uh, the call, call in is goes still up to, uh, to Berlin? Yes, it will. Yes, it will. They work very closely. Ted works very closely with the dispatcher up in that area as well as. The drivers participate in that too, to coordinate services. And given that you have <coughs> limited the, recently the, uh, the number of buses that are used, did, did that also limit, or obviously limited the, the number of people, the drivers that you have? Have we lost those drivers? Have you lost those no, drivers? we haven't lost any drivers. We had started, when we first started our system, we hired the two, we had six drivers because they are split shifts. We had morning and we had afternoon. And what happened is two of the drivers had found other employment that gave them more hours and they were more interested in it. Had we know more of the details on that. So what we did is, if two, two of the drivers had left, we took the two remaining and we split the shifts between them for that second vehicle. 
leaving a third vehicle that was, you know, it was a spare if we needed it. It's available for trips, the trips that we're planning to do, all the trips that we're planning to do, you know, as they are as they are scheduled. In uh, in another county, I was invited to something they were putting on uh, some their buses, their demand response buses online. And there, they only do um, medical and pharmacy. That's all they do. Mm -hmm. um, I understand that we have cha chosen here to to add to that this other other uh, means. But now you're saying that that's going to be, take second place. To it always did, even in the services <coughs> we provide in Coas County and Northern Grafton County. Medical is priority for all of those. Um, the other trips are mixed in with them, which helps if we have extra seats and someone needs to get in the same area or needs to go, either going by the same, the same places that they want to get off at, it helps us to better economize and provide more productive and efficient service. But medical has always been priority, and our funder requires that of us also. Can you also explain the um, fair system? Mm -hmm. Fair system, when we first looked at it, it was put on, it was to be within the service areas that were proposed initially in the plan. Since then, because we are traveling many different distances, they have revised, this, the fair system has been revised. When so demand response fair now. Demand response fair. The public system fair is one rate, you ride all day, there is a transfer, there is an initial charge for a transfer, it's very reasonable, I think it's a dollar. And you ride all day for? Is it two dollars? Two dollars. When that system starts up. And the demand response system? Prices vary, pending the distance that are being traveled. Seniors are transported at a suggested donation. Um, and it, that also varies depending on the distance that's being traveled. And for those who are not seniors? Then there is a fear that they pay unless there is a subsidy for them if they are traveling under the um, transition assistance for needy families program then they contract with us and they they purchase passes for their their clients to travel medicaid pays for medicaid clients that are eligible we have a system at my office where we have to call in every morning to verify medicaid eligibility because it has to be same day or we can't collect reimbursement for it so it's a tedious system that we have to work with, but we do do that. We've got a billing clerk at my office that does all of them for in the entire service area that we do, that we service. And we have fixed rates and fixed fares with them, which are in line with the, with the general public pays. And um, one must call in advance yes. for this service? Yes. For the fixed service? Oh, for the demand response service? For the demand response service, we do ask that they call 24 hours in advance. We do take same-day calls. We just cannot promise that we can accommodate them. There may not be any time available on our schedules. We also take subscription. So if someone has a standing appointment, say every Monday at 10 o'clock to get to the employment office, then they can book that in advance, a month, two months in advance. We like to keep it within a month or two. But they can book that in advance so it's a standing appointment. Oh, good, because once the dialysis center opens in North Conway, or in Conway, I should say, mm -hmm. <coughs> then that would be, they could book that in advance. The, the only thing that we have found with dialysis clients, and I can't say that that's going to impact it the same way here, because it is, it's a different location and it's a different system. But the one thing that we found with dialysis clients was that the demand was so great that we could not keep up with the demand. So we bought in volunteer drivers and we tried doing it with volunteer drivers. Again, the demand was it's huge and it's no, we're, we're not alone. You're, we're not alone in Coas, nor North, nor Grafton County. It's everywhere. But we, one of the things that we've done with our Tritown system over in the Coas, and it goes into the you know, the Grafton area, is try and work it so that people are able to drive the fixed route system. It's affordable to be able to go back and forth, and that way there's not tying up as much of the demand response and leaves that open more for for other clients calls for door to door service. And we will work with that once that starts up. It may, we may have to change things around a couple times to see how it's going to best work and how many we can accommodate. And we also work with the RSVP program, with their volunteer driver program. Uh, I think it will certainly be more helpful than what, we, what is 
there now. Did anyone? Uh, Mr. I got five questions, I think. Um, we've now been at this program for, for six months. Um, how is your ridership going? Do you have any figures? Do you I have do. I do have figures. I, don't, I can't give you them for the specific areas at this point. We do have them. I would be happy to take an email address or your phone number and get you specific if you have specifics that you yes, need. Yes, I do. Okay. Um, when we started off in December, we provided 110 rides. We soon jumped to 230 the next month in January. Then we, February, 354. In March, 363. In April, 386. And keep in mind, we are traveling distances because they are larger than what we predicted, projected to be for our service areas. Currently, we have a total of 2,713 rides in six months that we're providing. And we're finding that there is demand in areas that we were not, we didn't have in a service area such as having Effingham. So we need to revisit, again, we need to revisit the service areas to see where the most need is to. Following up on that question, what constitutes a ride? When we pick someone up from at their home and we take them to their drop-off point, that's one ride. If they need a ride back, when we pick them up to take them back to their home, that's another ride. So in essence, a ride is a one-way trip. So basically, you got half those numbers. No, this is, they don't have if you're home. talking round trips, yeah. we would have half of that would be round trips. Well, when you say you've got 300, basically that's, a, that's, that's 150 plus because I'm assuming most of those people return home at some point. The majority do, but many don't. Many probably are at the hospital and just take a ride home. They get picked up at the hospital. A friend will take them down. Uh, many people might go to go shopping and meet a friend and then ride home with a friend. Two people could go shopping, meet a friend, and ride home with a friend. So I wouldn't be able to tell you you know, how many one way uh, we always count them as one way because that's how we're built okay um is it possible to get a uh, a breakdown of what towns and what um, organizations have uh, to, uh, utilized our services to uh to cap to, to the to the program funding or are you talking usage of the service funding my understanding, Conway, who probably gets the most use, didn't donate anything. They haven't at this point. So we're really relooking, you know, we're, we're looking... About going up to the Conway line and stopping. Well, I mean, it makes it really, really difficult to do. Because a lot of the people that we're serving are really, they're, they're the elderly that just can't, they're, they have no other means of transportation. How much is your revenue been for the last six months from Medicare? I don't have that. I can't get that for you, though. And, and we don't, it's not Medicare. It's Medicaid. We, it's Medicaid. Medicaid. We can't collect from Medicare. Medicare only does I meant Medicaid. Um, I meant Medicaid. Emergency. Um, what does CAP, what is CAP's uh, administrative fee for this? Um, you, you, you get government grants, you get town grants, you get, I don't think county, county contributions. We do. We get county and town from our from the two other counties, from Grafton and Colas. No, <coughs> yeah. I'm, I'm speaking in Carroll County while I'm discussing this. Okay. Um, what does CAP take as an administrative fee for this? Um, we take, I can only give you a percentage, I can't tell you what amount off the top of my head, but I believe the indirect cost for us would be about 10.1% of our overall of our overall revenue and uh, our expenses which have to meet. So you're, you're saying that the cash percentage to run this out of the grant is 10% roughly? It's 10% for some for the administrative cost from CAP. There are other administrative costs that are incurred from the, the program itself, okay, for my staff to do it, which are other, I can't tell you that offhand, but I would be happy to get you that. What I'd like to know is what the total administrative cost is for running this operation. Sure. You want both programs, the name responds end? Yes. Sixth Street? Um, I guess that's it. Thank you very much. No oh, no, on the fares. Um, this is